yo-yo, faux shizzle and uh, so forth. It's time for another edition of the one and only and horribly horrible rap in the forums. Oh yes, I rhyme horrible with horrible, I'm seriously street and bling and bring it on and so forth. Right, the idea of this segment is we take some of the worst, horrible, just disgustingly awful posts that we can find from the WoW official forums and turn them into raps. Because, obviously, that makes it all better. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's time for the first rap of the day. I don't even know what this is about. I'm going to do it anyway. It's Hecklemeister, a level one former malt from the realm Maelstrom. I see. Okay. It's a one and a two and a three and a four. Heckle cries, wizard I can read, you knew all right so. In an earlier post, Storting Hill told me to create a cry thing like Zong. Girls are to suck. Over the past two months, I started getting involved with two girls. Not at the same time. One goes date the other, she leaves. And what do they do? They move. Both of them, that's plus plain bad luck. But I blame my parents so like I got the first season DVD of The Office. American. And guess what? It's only six episodes long. So like a good friend of mine has joined the wrestling squad at school and now he just talks about getting fingered to practice and hanging out with those guys then there's this whole trolling thing I've gotten out of practice and that dude yeah I was like pissing me off so I was like screw this and then I stopped posting for a while when I talked to Ivelia now I'm playing AA in AA there are kinds of dudes and are way better than me and that's like stupid I should be able to boom headshot to every single enemy I've been Last couple of days And have been totally capable of speech So like that, that sucks a lot And now I'm sitting here And it's all my parents' fault And it's also blizzards Can someone please, please, please confirm That I am not a leecher But rather a helper Or even a leader of society Question, 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 question mark Okay, thanks I can't see the rest of the page Because I've scrolled it down Oh dear Okay, thanks Do your worst dotting and razorlinger and everyone else that ever trolled me or tried or alias as of late, your rank has gained even more digits. Okay, thanks, editor. Heckles is not thought as I is a manho. SP, ed second editor. More flashy title. Post edited by Hecklemeister. Everyone knows that chamois wines are seriously off the handle, dog. What is a handle, dog, anyway? Why is it off it? What's going on? I really have no idea anymore. Who knows? Lil Warriors, a level 54 gnome warrior from the guild of Lil Vengeance. Ooh, they sound bad. Realm Thunderlord. Oh, yes. There's two posts in here. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, it's a five and a two and a seven and a three. Shams make absolutely no sense. Dot, 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 sigh. Okay, Shams, these are the most ridiculous thing in the world. Self-res, what the F? It doesn't make sense. A res would require your mana. If you're dead, how can you have mana? Plus, how the hell can you cast? If you're dead, it just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Shams need to be nerfed. Like, I don't mean to get rid of them. Don't. Just make them able to do so many things. They can wear just about everything except class specific armor. They can also use like any weapon. Use totems like Instacast anything in the world like W2F is with you! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, eh, eh, exclamation mark. OMG, you make no sense, Shami. Congratulations, Shami, you have won the award for stupidest class in the world. That all I have to say, die, self-raise, and dot, 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 a frost shocker. And here comes Kermakis. Oh, no. So like, I used to play D2 under the name. Nip tall, but like this gentleman lick. Westburn me come to game. Oh, getting scarred. Ha ha, for 2020 Palatorch. So I was like, OMG, WTF. And I whispered to my mate, OMG, like I'm getting 2020 Palatorch. Ha ha, Neve. So I went into the game and he said, show me your torch. And I'm like, how do I know you're trustworthy? He says, OMG, ruffle, noob, I don't have the bally torch. You such a noob. Go play wild care best. So I took his friendly advice. 
One started a shame, and I don't like it, cause they sem to suck versus pally like they are immune to everything, maybe. Like EF Frost Shock is on cooldown. I'm totally pwned. So like a look over my list of grievances for the shammy clap. I'm finally grabbing the ball by the horse, please post blue. Let's raise some ground rules first. My list of rules, number one, looking over, and two, okay, we are ready. Okay, so let's start with the list. My list of grievances. Zero. Shammy should have more stuns like Pallies. One, why do totems have reagents? Like I have to farm for like an half an hour just to get a wood for my stupid totems. It takes some freaking skill to instantly you will allow to totem mid battle out there, shut you wooden planks. Ah. Two, like, why does Pally's have spell that returns them to their home base? And they, like, totally become invincible whilst donging it three one time. I heard that posting pics, like, really helps your argument. So, like, I have a picture for you guys. This is me getting owned by Pally. His name was kind of like mine, but it had bubble in it. As you can clearly, my frost shock was on cooldown, so I was basically screwed. So instead, I made a fire totem. But I had to freaking sit there and carve it from my wood while he just hit me. Then I tried to wash them so I could get my frost shock off its cooldown. But Pally with either elite stun resist, Rachel resisted it. So my only option was to get pwned. To up to 200,000 K hammer of death while a crowd of fellow hordes wash and four poop socks. So anyway, I'm rolling pally until the unforeseeable future. Maybe if Jamie's get puffed with like Oki rings or something that give plus three tile points, then like we could be good again. P.S. Heck, I'd even settle for full Kalto rings, then I could have plus one all talents and maybe play my jammy again. <laughs> Oh god, I think my brain's just spontaneously minced itself. You listen to Blue Please here on Wild Radio as we're calling it tonight. Open please, because the topics are set by you. It's crazy talk, folks. It's like this whole communist thing we've got going on here. Yeah, we'll take over your countries. Right. Now, a few shout-outs to go before I get on with it. A couple more topics in Nimsel of the Week, and then I shall finish up for the night. Because there are far too many topics here, and I'd never finish them. I'd be up all night. Probably all day. And then any proceeding nights and days. Right. Okay. My name is Nathan Rahl from Smodathorn, and I want to say thanks from the military personnel for WoW Radio and the WoW community for allowing us to make friends and stay in touch with cool people, regardless of where our jobs send us. Oh, how sweet. It seems that recently, yeah, Blizzard has been hyping up their new content more and more, and further in advancing causes... Uh, causing the big risk of disappointment. What are your feelings of the hype for 1.9 versus, say, the hype that existed for Blackwing Lair? I think a lot of people's problem with 1.9 was their expectations were much greater. Also, the expansion is very hyped, and we don't even have complete information about it, including when it will actually come out. I feel that Blizzard should design content, inform us about it, and then put it put it out, not wait great lengths of time to build up expectations for something that may or may not live up to the greatness they make it out to be. In the end, when there is hype and mystery in the new content, such as the new Alliance race, it does more damage to the player base than help it. Discuss. Interesting. Maybe. Right. Hype is an interesting commercial tool, and when you're trying to keep people playing a game, hype is a very useful tool. Because, let's face it, the challenge for Blizzard now is not to get more players, but to keep people playing. It's true. So, how do you keep people playing? Well, new content. But how do you maximize the effect of your new content? Hype it, hype it, hype it. Say if I wanted to quit the game right now, yeah? I don't know what's coming in the future. It's 1.9. Are we going to get 1.10? Are we actually going to get a 2.0? Will there be a significant content update after this? What's going to happen? Now, there's scarce information. There is no information. I don't know what's going to happen. So I think, well, okay, there's nothing really worth staying for. I'll just quit the game now. But what if they release information? Something big is going to happen. There's going to be a massive world event. We're going to introduce a new class. We're going to have new professions, all that kind of crap. That'll keep you playing. Yeah. Hype is an interesting weapon. It's propaganda more than anything. Is it harmful to the community? Possibly. But then again, you've got to bear in mind... 
is it the fault of Blizzard? Or is it the fault of the community themselves for being too easily led? For getting expectations up too high? Alright, 1.9, I didn't have all that many expectations. I haven't been into AQ yet, because it's not open. The patch itself was a bit of a meh. What I really liked was the fact that they let me allow, allow me to conjure 10 crystal water in any given time. That's been a great help. But, as far as the patch goes, there's nothing that really thrilled me there. Even the whole anchorage thing. I like the whole storyline thing. I had the fact that they actually led up to it instead of just releasing it. I mean, they didn't really lead up to Blackwing Lair, did they? Blackwing Lair was just dumped in there. There's no... There was no justification. There were no pre-quests. There's the attunement quest, and that's about it. There's no other thing about Blackwing Lair. Blackwing Lair is just there. Just there, and it wasn't there before. Is that acceptable? Maybe. But does it make it a little more interesting if you do hype it up, if you do get expectations and the mind works and thinks, ooh, what could be behind those gates? Especially with the Anchorage thing. I do like the whole thing they've done with Silithus. Some people may view it as hype, and yes, of course it's hype. It's getting people excited. That's all hype is. The ability to get someone excited about something that isn't here yet. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. So yeah, I can see Nathan's point there. That he believes that hype can be harmful but you've also got to bear in mind that it's people's responsibility their individual responsibility to decide just how excited and thrilled or in fact disappointed they get if blizzard says i'm going to do this and then fails then that's disappointment but when it's a vague thing like the whole anchorage thing they didn't promise that anchorage is going to be the best thing ever no not at all they didn't promise that 1.9 was going to be the best thing ever no not at all they didn't it's a more vague thing. People actually create their own expectations, and that's not necessarily Blizzard's fault. Right. Let's see what else we've got here. How about Horde of Alliance? Is Horde of Alliance easy to play? Neither are easy to play. They're both pretty much the same, as far as I'm concerned. I play quests on both sides, but I'd have to say that the Alliance quests are a little more interesting. The Barrens is just a really dull area to quest in. Right, let's have a look. Someone asked, I can't remember who, but someone asked the question. Best racials. That's a difficult one. Let me put it this way. I mean, the whole human racial thing has become a lot more useful recently. When it was first released, who would have really picked a human for that racial? Who cares? Ooh, 5% faction, man. Now, it's like, ooh, I get my Zul'Gurub rep faster. I get my rep with... Nosdromo, the brood of Nosdromo. I get my rep with the Scenarian hold faster. Heck, it's a good job that you don't have a human druid, otherwise you'd be exalted with Scenarian hold in no time. It's now that's become a very useful skill. A few months ago, I actually no. Let's let's just say back at launch, EU launch, I would have said that's useless. But now that they've put a lot more rep grinding into the game, yeah, that's a very handy skill to have. The new Berserking is quite nice. I wouldn't say it's the best skill in the game, but it's quite nice. Will of the Forsaken was nerfed, but it's still quite handy. Although it has sort of been phased out a little bit, because you can now get a trinket like that. It's not unique anymore, but it's still handy. What else? Night Elf skills, dodge, Shadow Mel. Shadow Mel with Hunters is Imber, and they shouldn't be allowed to use bloody aim shot in it. Let me put it that way. It's horrible. Ugh. It's a nice skill, though. Dwarven Fear Wars with the priests, very handy. The best skill? Well, it's got to be throwing specialization, clearly. That's the most useful skill in the game, and I'm not being sarcastic in the slightest. Right. Okay, someone asked me the question where do you think the auction house cut goes? You want me to be quite honest? It goes nowhere. The only reason the auction house cut actually exists. Why does the auction house cut actually exist, come to think of it? Other than for the sake of, well, it's an auction house, therefore you should be paying money to use it. Transfer. It stops it being used for transfer. But it doesn't really, does it? Was that the intention? Possibly. But at least it costs some money to transfer. You can't transfer freely. Say, if you wanted to do an Alliance to Horde transfer, at least you are charged for it. It can't just be used as a glorified mailbox. Someone made the point about the whole thing now that you've got Auction House in different cities. So I could effectively use the Auction House to send an item to somebody. Instantly. 
The auction house cut may prevent me from doing that because it becomes costly. Perhaps it's just better to mail it. But then again, is there any really purpose behind it? Anything that is really, really affected by it? No. The auction house cut, you barely notice it. It's a little bit of money. It's not a massive problem. It's not a big issue. It's nothing anyone really gets wild over. Where does it go? To the goblins. Because they're greedy. What can I say? It disappears. It's a money sink. A lot... You know, a lot like any other thing in the game. It's a way to just get a little bit of money out of the economy, maybe. Right. Just a thought. This is from Nick Sheldon. Wouldn't it be neat if, say, a level 60 warrior had the ability to switch over to the Horde through a series of epic quests? Quests could be called Corruption. Hey! Hey! That! That would indicate the Horde of Evil, and we all know that the Alliance are bastards. A whole lot of them. Another possibility would be a quest called Redemption, where you could return your original side with an alliance or horde. If you implemented right, this could have an epic story behind it. Just an idea. I don't see the problem with that. But then again, what you do get there is a possibility of massive server imbalance. Now, whereas some people may may use it to change the side with the fewest people, what you'll find is people will often change the winning side. If battlegrounds are being dominated by teams from the horde, then PvPers on the Alliance may change over to the Horde to be involved in that. And what you get is a massive, great race imbalance, which is not a good thing, I tell you. Not a good thing at all. Chris Band says this. After the initial release of WoW around the world, its player base continues to grow, but for a pay-to-play game, can this continue at the same rate? With other games such as EQ2 and new games such as RF Online taking lessons from Blizzard's success, do you reckon the US and EU will continue to stick with WoW, especially in Europe, where there's be never been so much of a market for MMORPGs before? Interesting idea. And I think what... Someone actually made a really good comment. I can't remember who did it. But someone made a fantastically good comment about why WoW is so successful. It's because it's so accessible. It's easy to play. Not only is it easy to play, but it's... What would be the term? It would just, it's user-friendly. It is friendly to newer players. You can go in there and you can sell all the content. It's not complicated. It's very easy to learn what you're doing. And it looks nice. It's got a very unique art style. And then the whole thing snowballed because people will play an MMORPG because other people are playing. You don't play an MMORPG if there's not enough people to even constitute the word massive. It's a big RPG. Everyone's playing it. Therefore, 5 million people can't be wrong. Will it continue to grow at the same rate? Probably not. I think the growth rate will probably stem off as new MMORPGs are released. Although I don't think any of the new ones will challenge it basically because of a complete lack of hype. Only in the hardcore gaming community at the moment are people aware of titles such as RF Online and Dark and Light, DDO Online, Middle Earth Online, Warhammer Online, blah blah blah. They're not hyped. Which is why the success story of Warcraft is interesting. Because you don't generally see those kind of games becoming popular with the masses, as it were. They're generally the domain of hardcore gamers. Whereas WoW is not like that. People outside of WoW know what WoW is. People outside of Planet Side don't know what Planet Side is. MMOs have generally been a very closed market. They're aimed at a very specific area of people, whereas WoW aimed at a broader slice of the population, which is why, in my opinion, it's so successful, despite being a good game. It's shallow in some respects. There are elements of WoW which I think are really shallow, but it doesn't stop it from being a good game, and it doesn't stop it from being appealing to the masses. The expansion will give it another kick in the teeth. It will increase its popularity even more. Yeah, and you get a good chance to hype it there, get it on TV. And overall, it's fun. And that's why people play it. It's fun. People enjoy it. Okay, I've just got enough time to get through Imbecile of the Week today, and then I'm going to be going. I've got a staff meeting, so I better attend. So, Embassy, 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 Embassy of the Week. The Imbecile of the Week goes to Tessera. Now, Tessera is the founder of a group called the Mage Union Group. And I'm going to post you the link to the Mage Union Statement. This is really funny. 
And just as an answer, a grey man, wow, has a dedicated radio show. Does any other game? Yeah, they do, actually. <laughs> They're not as good as these ones, but they do. Right. Statement from the Maze Union. It's funny, because these guys are... Wow, I'm just amazed. These guys are so up for themselves, and they uh, got so much bravado. It's like, we are standing up for the Maze community. All 200 of us. Wow, it's 5 million players, and you've got 200 people in your little Yahoo group. Ho, ho, ho. Good stuff there. I'm scared. Oh, you've got animated GIFs as well. I mean, that's thrilling. You should have seen their group. They actually, I think they've closed their group down now. Oh, no. Can I get in there? No. Join the Maze Union. The last time I actually clicked on the Maze Union, I couldn't get access to it. That was about half an hour ago. And it was funny. When I did see it, it's just full of animated GIFs and really stupid text. Like, wow, you know, we're so fantastic. We're standing up to the machine of Blizzard. But no, you're not. You're whining. It's great fun here. I mean, I'm reading this statement here. They use lots of really long words. They must have spent a long time writing this. Oh, here we go. See how many forum cliches you can post about what uh, you can find about whiners here. I'll give you a hint. Every time I find a forum cliche, I will give you a ding. And then I will explain why. Right. Every person who plays World of Warcraft represents a paying customer. Ding. The paying customer argument. Waving your $13 a month in the air like a righteous broadsword of infernal doom. Come down to smite the people. Smite the evildoers. Slay them with blood and honor. For the glory of my class. No, it's a video game. Really. There's, it's $13 a month. It's the price of a pizza. Get a grip, please, for your own safety. So long as every customer is paying the same monthly fee as every other customer, it stands to reason that all customers are entitled to an equally enjoyable gaming experience. Wrong. No, you're not. The game is what you make of it. If you don't enjoy your class, then re-roll another class. It's that simple. Blizzard are not obliged to give you fun. How can they do that? They can't, of course. It can't be done. You make the game. Blizzard may develop the game, but they certainly do not make it in the sense of enjoyment and fun. It must be equally enjoyable for all character classes across the board at all times. <laughs> yeah, whatever you say. Do you... Right. When you go into an FPS, yeah, you're playing a first-person shooter, do, is every weapon as enjoyable as the last one? If you're playing a strategy game, is every side enjoyable as the last one? No! You're playing a racing game, is every car as enjoyable to ride as the last one? No! You're playing a sports game, is every football team as enjoyable to play as the last one? No! It's not! <laughs> I'm amazed, like, you are obliged to give us all an equal experience. No, you're not! No, Blizzard are not obliged to do anything! They maintain the game. You are supposed to go out and find your own fun. You don't get it spoon-fed to you. Blithering spineless idiot. Yet it is not the case. The entire character class has become increasingly dissatisfied and angry. An entire character class? I'm not dissatisfied and angry, therefore an entire character class has not become increasingly dissatisfied and angry. You cannot speak for an entire character class. There's 200 of you. How many majors are there? Let's just, for the sake of argument, assume that the class balance is equal among 5 million players. So let's get the calculator out because my mental arithmetic is poor. So we get 5 million players here. Right, how many zeros after 5? That's 6, of course. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5 million players divided by 9 classes equals... Oh, that's interesting. That can't be right, surely. Oh, yeah, it probably is. 555,555 majors. And there's 200 of you. Do you know how many that is? Do you know how many representatives of the Mage Union there are in the Mage Guild, assuming that there are 5,000, 500,555, what was it? 555,555. There's too many fives in this. Divided by 200. That's one in every 2,777.775 Mages that are dissatisfied with their class. Oh, wow! Vocal minority for the lose. We pay the same fees, and everyone is great to pay, blah, blah, blah. They go on and on and on about this, like, we're second-class citizens. No. Don't be ridiculous. 
game-breaking inequities that have often ruined our gameplay experience, such as... Name one. You can't just come out with this crap and expect people to fall for it. Oh, I used the word inequities, therefore we can't possibly be wrong. No, yes you can, because you've got no evidence. A one-dimensional class role has been considerably diminished in its effectiveness, both in our eyes and in the eyes of the overall community. Oh really, in the eyes of the overall community? Evidence now. Who is the overall community? In your eyes? Yeah, because you're retarded. In the eyes of the overall community? When? When is it? No, give me an example of when the overall community has stood up and said, oh, uh, yeah, mages are not as powerful as they used to be, blah, blah. And they're useless. Blah, blah. Bleh. Whinge, whinge, whinge. A one-dimensional class role. Welcome to WoW. Every single class in an instant situation, bear in mind, we're talking about 60 here, that's where the balancing happens, is one-dimensional. Healers heal. Damage does damage. Tanks tank. The whole idea is it's supposed to be teamwork-based. It's not about the individual. It's about you working as part of a team. And to do that, you may have to spam Frostbolt. Oh, this is great. Condescension, obfuscate, and neglect from Blizzard's representatives. What does that even mean? I've never actually heard anyone actually use the word obfusca obfuscation ever in real life. I know what it means, but I can't pronounce it because no one ever uses it. I never once had the need to use the word obfuscation in real life. Con condes oh, God. Condescension. Yeah. They're being condescending you because you're idiots. You damn fools. Threats from Blizzard's representatives when members of our community have expressed outrage. These threats amount to Blizzard bullying of their customers. No, they amount to them telling you, you're a moron. I don't agree with what you say, but I find the death you're right to say it. Therefore, I will disagree with what you say very, very strongly and call you out for it. You're a paying customer does not entitle you to be a blithering idiot. If you want to make a class concern, fine, but stop whining about it. Do you realize that an organization such as the Mage Union makes our class, my class, look like a bunch of blithering idiots that don't know how to play? We, cr you know, the impression that it's giving is that Mages are a whiny class. They're not. It's just people like the Mage Union make it look that way. 200 members? Woo. Assume there's... 555,555 mages in the game. Ugh. Roll another class. Yeah, please. If you don't like your class, re-roll. Oh, but we... Blizzard are obliged to make our class enjoyable. No, you're obliged to make your class enjoyable. If you don't like it, stop doing it. I'd love to see that. You go up to the makers of a football company, say you go up to Adidas, it's like, you were obliged to make this football enjoyable for me, despite the fact that I don't like football. Oh, yeah, that'll work. It's time for action. As the founder and leader of the Mage Union, I call upon all members of the Mage community. Careful reading and review the statements above. I carefully read and reviewed your statements above, and I've come to the conclusion that you're an idiot. This is to Sarah, founder of the Mage Union group, recently banned for having eight forum alts, which he, she, or it used to actually support his arguments. He'd make an argument and then has eight forum alts reply say, yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's right. He's right. He's right. <laughs> oh, for the love of God. Whinging fools. Now, here's the great thing. Here's the really great thing, yeah? Serik, also known as one of the CMs. The CMs of the American board. Just go in there, have a look. Serik kicks his ass and actually points out all these people actually belong to the same person. And says, you are not a freedom fighter, there is no fascist regime, this isn't politics, it's a game to Sarah a big difference. I couldn't agree more. A one quick comment. Katamari says, eh, TB, have you ever visited the major forums? I don't think so, you're the vocal minority. No. Have you ever visited the Mage forums? Are oh, 555,555 Mages posting on that forum? No! There's a whole bunch of whinging idiots. Ooh, 300, 400 maybe actively posting on that forum. Let's go and have a look at the Mage forum, shall we? Let's see. Wow, Europe. Can we get access to the forums? Do, 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 do. 
Mage forms. Bearing in mind, I don't post in this because it's full of bloody whinging idiots. Class forms, class forms, class forms. Mage. Mage. There we go. Now. Replies. Big threats. Some of the big right, class concerns. You know how many replies it got? 385. Out of 555,555 mages. Some of the biggest threads, do you know how many views they've got? Bearing in mind, views do increase every time someone looks at it. 50,000 on a sticky that's been around for ages. 50,000 views. Some of those could be non-majors. More than likely they are because it's got a Blizzard reply in it. Therefore, people look at it. It could be the same person going back over and over and over again. Of course it is. So, to be honest, am I the vocal minority here? No, of course I'm not. You look at the mage form, you can see the vocal minority is the people whinging in the mage form. Everyone in the mage form is in fact the vocal minority. Because there's not enough of them. They are in the minority. Everything they say is a minority view. It represents their view and the few chosen sheep who decide to follow them. I say this, this, this about mages. Yeah, 10, 20 people agree. You're the vocal minority. You always will be the vocal minority. And anyone who posts on the forum is in fact the vocal minority. Because the vast majority of the game players do not post on the forum. Therefore, anyone that posts on the forum is by default the vocal minority. Logic for the win. You've been listening to Blue Please here on Wild Radio. Thanks for listening to my show tonight. Tune in to the Ancient of Law tomorrow and check out our schedule. Brand new show coming out on Tuesday. End game with Tyrim. Dealing with end game raiding. Oh yes. We have been without something like that for a very long time. And we listened to you. You said you wanted it. We gave you it. So tune in then. It'll be great, folks. After the downtime down under, it's end game with Tyrim. Check out the rest of the shows this week. I'll be back at the same time next week, God willing. Sonata Act, because it's always a good one to go out on. So I think Full Moon is on the cards, folks. Thank you for listening. It's good night for me. <laughs>